you can find an overview of all my videos at www.genesispc.com and you click on the button videos on YouTube. Say you have a database that you want to back up each time the user closes the database. I will do that only for tables, but you can do it for more. I will explain that later. The problem is that Access does not have an on-close event for a database. Like Excel has a workbook on-close event, Access doesn't have that. So we have to use a trick. We uh, create a form that has nothing in it, but when that form closes, and it closes automatically when you close the database, then we are going to use the on-close event. So you, you just create a blank form going into the design view it's a blank form and on the event tab on close you create visual basic code so in form form one i didn't rename the form i just left it form one i put in form close so you go to f the object form close but you did that already through the properties box puts a subroutine that I happen to call backup. So when the form closes, it runs backup. Where is backup? Backup is a subroutine in a module. So you have to create a module, insert a module. And there is sub backup, which I will discuss very soon. But before we do that, we have to make sure that the form pops up when the database opens. So later on when you close the database it will automatically close that form and in the on close event it runs back up. So in order to do so we call auto run which is a function not a sub please. We call that through a macro auto execute. Whatever the macro is if you give it a name auto execute it will automatically run. So I'm going to show you what I did in that auto execute. You create a macro in design view here. So you use the action run code and there you call auto run. Run the code from the function auto run because it's a function. Don't forget to open and close parentheses at the end. There is that form by the way. You, you can just close it. I'm just leaving it the way it is. Uh, if you ever want to not show that form here, you just go to View Properties, right click View Properties and hide it. I'm, I'm just leaving it for now. So back to the VBA code. In that auto run that you call from the macro that automatically executes, because you call that ma macro auto execute, you Use OForm of the form type and set it to form form1 or whatever the name is of that form. And you set it visible to false. That means it doesn't it it opens up, but you don't see it on your screen opened up. That is not the hidden one. The hidden one is that you don't find it here. Let me show you that again. You can hide it here so the user cannot double click on it and open it again. Okay. And then the backup one. Uh, first of all, I, I would make sure that your database is located in a trusted location. Otherwise, each time it copies a table or whatever, it will ask you permission. How do you get a trusted location? Very simple. You go to the database, File, Options, and there you go to the Trust Center, Trust Center Settings. And then what are your trusted locations? And just add a new location, the folder or subfolder that holds your database. If you don't do that, you will get annoyed all the time. Is do you really want to allow this situation? I had already done that, so I don't have to worry about that part. So then 
I declare variables, and the important one is that you have a reference to the DAO library. Tools, references. And you should have in there somehow a reference to the Axis database object libraries. If you cannot find that one under Microsoft, etc., then you browse and try to find ACE DAO DLL. It depends on your machine and your version. On a 64 bit machine, you may have to do that. Anyway, we store in S files the path of the current project and we hook onto it space ampersand space a backslash a literal backslash inside double quotes hook onto it space ampersand space today's date in the format m dash d dash y y and hook onto it either dot mdb or a the, the modern version of access 2013 or 2010. I kept the old version so I can use it on any version of access. If that file exists already and you can find that through there, then you have to kill S file. So if the directory function on S file is not an empty string, double quotes, double quotes, then kill S file. So I do that so every day you get a new file with the date of that day. So you can always go back to older versions. Then we are going to create a new database by using ODB. ODB is of the DAO library dot database type. Look in the database engine objects. The first workspace of the collection of workspaces, everything is zero based in Access, so the first one is zero. Create a database with the name as file DB language channel. That is what is the connect. Then you close that database and then you look for all your table definitions. Declare a variable of the table definition type for each OTD. In the current database table definitions, it runs automatically through all the table definitions. Unfortunately, there are more tables than you think. Microsoft creates its own table definitions sometimes, and they always start with this prefix. So if the left part of the OTD dot name, the four left characters, if it's not msys and it's not a microsoft data table but your table then do command copy the object into the file as file comma comma it's of the table type and which one otd dot name that will be the first one in the table definitions the second one the third one etc you could also use do command transfer database by the way and if next OTD. You could also do this for query definitions, even for reports, for macros. I showed you that in another video. Do not do it for forms in this case, because of the situation that we have a hidden form and that is going to be closed at the end, so you create all kind of trouble. But the most important part is always the tables. They get updated every day. But the other objects don't get updated usually. And if you still want a copy of the entire database, then just select the database and then control C, control V and give it a new name that is your complete database backup. But the tables update probably every day. So that's where we are at now. So what, what is going to happen? At the end, I tell the user that they were backed up in the folder under the name, the right part of S-file. S-file also includes the entire path, folder, subfolder, 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 the length of S-file minus 
in string reverse, look backwards, start from the back and find the first backslash. And that position, subtract that from the length and take the right part of S file, so only that last part. So I'm closing access, I am back here. I'm going to close the database. I save all the changes I did. And I'm going to open the backup at close again. I have my auto executable there that has just run because I opened it. So the form is now invisible active here. And now when I close the database, it will run in module one all the stuff and it says the backup backup of tables is stored in the same folder under the file name 41714mdb that is the day I did this and there is your there, I'm just opening it for a moment to show you there are the tables I had in my simple database okay. I'm opening my original database again Everything is active at this moment. I just want you to know if you want to know more about access tools. I made for you a CD-ROM with more than 1500 slides and that discusses every issue you may want to know about in access. You find it at genesispc.com. If you want to know more about VBA, I did only very simple parts of it. Then you will also see that there is another CD-ROM that you can find at genesispc.com that has the VBA issues of access. I did that for 2007, but that is also applicable to 2010 and 2013. The user interface has changed a little bit, but these issues are still the same.